Hey everybody. You've heard of comfort food? Well, this is gonna be a comfort shave today. I'm just gonna shave with my old favorites, my old trusted, the things that I like a lot, and uh, share that with you if you care to join me. Uh, I will not be using Barbasol today, but I like to feature them every episode just for the fun of it. <laughs> Almost every episode. So what I'm gonna use today is my old Rockwell razor, and I got a feather blade, a brand new feather blade in here. And I'm going to use the shaving soap, be the Cella Crema de Barba. I hope that pronunciation is correct, so anybody that speaks Italian, please let me know. Uh, I'm going to use my West Coast shaving brush, the Jolly Rancher one that you can eat when you get hungry. And for the end, because it's a little, it's, it's not a little, it's a lot muggy outside today. So I'm going to use the Osage Rub with just the right amount of menthol to, to kind of cool me off. I should use all menthol products today because I've been sweating like a dog since Saturday night. But uh, I'm just gonna use that one today and use these other ones because I haven't used the, uh, the cella in a while and I really like that stuff. Okay, I just took a shower, did my hair, put some water up on my face and it's time to lather up. Now, I don't like to use a bowl, as you well know if you've ever seen any of my videos. Uh, if you can tell, there's like a uh, little fingerprints in this shaving soap. That's because my youngest son has been using this lately to shave with. You remember how I told you he, I might do a shaving video with him? Well, he's been practicing, so that's what those little fingerprints are. So what I'm going to do is just stick the old brush into the cella. Not the cello, the cello. <laughs> I swear. Oh, if I could find something, I know it's supposed to smell like marzipan or... Uh, or almonds, or cherries, or Dr. Pepper, or whatever you have. If I could find something that smelled, or tasted exactly like this smells, it would be the only thing I'd eat for a while. <laughs> I love it! Okay, there's enough. I think that's enough. Let's see if it's enough, shall we? It's a test. Oh great, the sun's coming out again. So I played a gig Saturday night um, for what this, what the organizer calls her cat ranch. And one of the guys in the band has been friends with this lady forever, and she does rescue cats and, you know, rescue and, and, and find cats that are hurt or needs, that need medical attention, and, uh, and she takes them in, and eventually she, she, I don't know how many cats she has, she must have like 50 cats. And she's got these habitats, these cat habitats, kind of like a, a gerbil or a hamster has those little habitats where they have... Uh, tunnels that they can climb through. Well, in her, her sizable backyard uh, out here in the country, out in Texas here, got a lot of land spread out. She's got a big backyard. Um, she's built these things uh, right next to her house and then out against the fence. And including one of them that's like a clubhouse. It's like a cat clubhouse. In fact, take a look at this short video of me inside just one of these cat clubhouses saying hi to all the citizens of that clubhouse. Check it out. Here we are in the cat clubhouse. There's a cat. There's another cat. This is my favorite one so far. Hi, kitty. There's a cat. There's a cat. There's some cats. There's a cat over here. The cat. This is the all their house. There's, there's a cool cat. His name is John. Here's a cat. Look at him. There's a cat down there playing. There's some more cats. This one's coming down to see. There's my buddy again. The cat's over here. There's a cat right there. Here's a cat. There a cat. Everywhere a cat cat. These are the shy cats in here. Hi shy cats. Is that why you're over here in the back room? Shy guys? Cats. Cats. And sleep. <laughs> You're the new grumpy cat, I guess. Aw, oh, grumpy cat. Rest in peace. <laughs> well, this is all right. That's a lot of cats. Now, the only thing that that video could not capture was, uh, uh, how shall I put this, the, the scent of the inside of that cat clubhouse. Those cats need to do some more cleaning, or at least get some Febreze or something. But, uh, yeah, so we played a gig for this cat ranch, as she calls it. And it was outdoors in the backyard, and oh, it, there had been thunderstorms all afternoon that were threatening to rain this thing out. Luckily, we, we missed out on that, but what that did do is raise the humidity levels. It must have been 90% humidity, and it was, I, 
I feel like I can't escape it. Like today, it feels the same way. Now, it's not normally that humid here in this part of Texas. Now, I grew up in Houston, where it's very, very humid all the time. And, uh, but even just coming up here to Central Texas, the humidity is much less because you're not as close to the Gulf of Mexico and all that stuff and probably lots of other reasons. We're probably a little bit higher elevation, Houston being down closer to the coast. And, uh, but my goodness, it has been so disgustingly hot and humid. I, ha I just took a cold shower because I was sweating. I took a walk also, my little exercise walk um, before this. But oh my goodness, I don't like humidity, folks. That's, <laughs> that's, that's my problem. And uh, I was outside in it a lot this weekend. We had a baseball tournament for my oldest son. And their team is called the Astros. Unfortunately, they lost. They lost their games. They were close. They were good games, but they lost them. So that was the end of the season. But oh, yesterday morning at that baseball game, after a night of being out like five hours in a backyard with that kind of humidity, why am I talking about the weather? Let's just. That's like the most boring subject. Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> Let's talk about shaving, shall we? So, um, oh, a quick update: the uh, the 1928. Uh, new improved Gillette has been sold to a gentleman up in Alaska. So I will be, uh, I just cleaned it off before this video. It's drying now. I will sanitize it and send it off to you. So thanks for, uh, for everyone's interest in that razor. It will be, it will have a new home up in Alaska. Or I guarantee it's a lot cooler than it is here. <laughs> Sorry, one more weather thing. I had to throw that in. But anyway, so, uh, now all I have left is the, uh, is the 1921 combination set. But I did shave with the, uh, the 1928 a couple more times. And it's good. I like it. It's a good razor. You can find them on eBay for not too much money. Don't pay a crazy amount. There are some on eBay where they're like asking, you know, a crazy exorbitant amount, a hundred some odd dollars for it. They're not worth that. Don't pay that price. Pay less than 30 if you can. I paid, I think, nearly 40, something like that with shipping. Anyway, okay. Pass number two. Let's just feel, first of all. You cannot go wrong with the Rockwell 6C, which I believe this is. I don't know how many times I've looked this thing up and it's like, okay, I'm, I'm committing that to memory. Yeah, I think it is the 6C, not the 6S. It's the slightly more expensive one. You cannot go wrong with that razor. It's $100, but like that old Gillette ad said from the 1920s, buying a razor should be like joining a fraternity or getting married. You do it only once and then never again. Did people stay married more often back then in the 1920s? Because uh, I know some people that have been married more than one time. And probably have more than one razor too. But anyway, that is a, yeah, the Rockwell is built like a tank. And it shaves beautifully. This is my favorite razor to get the job done and get it done well. And, you know, I always use it on the, this is the adjustable one, so it comes with these different bottom plates. I always use the five, but I did try the six recently, but I felt it was just a tad too aggressive. And I like an aggressive shape, you know, fairly aggressive. But for me, sweet spot is the five. I don't know why, but... Five, I think, is my favorite number. <laughs> that is a random thought. And you know what else is weird? That's a, that's a pregnant pause there as I shave my cheek. Um, I find, whenever I find, like, if I get change, like if I bought something and they give me coins for change, if I get any coin that's pre-1964, I save it, like old nickels or quarters or dimes or pennies. And I was coming across a lot, and still do, nickels from 1964. I mean, so much so that they were just a common thing. These, you know, 55-year-old coins. I was like, why are there so many 1964 nickels still in circulation? And so I looked it up. This is for you numismatists. <laughs> that means somebody collects coins, you see. Um, they made a billion nickels. In 1964 for some reason a billion and that's why there are so many still in circulation right now why 
What was going on in 1964, besides the Beatles conquering America, that they needed all those nickels? Kids were buying gum with the nickels? Were they buying a soda pop? Was Coca-Cola only a nickel back then and Coke machines were becoming more common? Does anybody know? Do any actual numismatists know why there were one billion nickels made? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't have anything of interest to talk about today. <laughs> I apologize. Oh my goodness. Let's make this short and sweet, shall we? I'm just thinking about how sweaty I am from that walk I took. I didn't get to do my normal long walk today. Okay, let's do a third pass and just get the problem areas like this down here. Because this is all really feeling good right now. All right. Yeah, I didn't get to do my walk today because I thought I was going to see my kids' talent show. It's the last week of school. Summer is almost upon us. I mean, we've got to figure out what to do with these kids for the next three months. But they had their talent show today. Both my sons, with three of their friends, did a dance routine to the Gummy Bear song. If you're a parent of a kid that's below 10 years old, you'll know what I'm talking about, the annoying Gummy Bear song. I won't sing it for you because I like my audience and I don't want to, to, to lose subscribers. Needless to say, uh, don't Google it and don't watch it on YouTube because it will not only annoy you, it'll get stuck in your head. But if you're a 10-year-old kid, if you're an 8-year-old kid, oh my goodness. So their mom, my wife, my wife. Oh, Jesus, now I'm doing <laughs> Borat impersonations. You can tell this is a Monday shave. Oh boy, I'm bringing, I'm firing on all cylinder today. <laughs> anyway, she, uh, she used to work in the uh, entertainment industry out in LA years ago. And she was a costume designer. She worked in the uh, wardrobe department for... Uh, different movies and TV shows. She did, uh, she worked on a David Lynch movie. She worked on that old TV show, Babylon 5, and a couple of other things. So she made them some uh, gummy bear outfits with these little gummy bear hats and very cute. She's talented when it comes to sewing and things like that, it's cool. But does she ever make me anything? <laughs> No. I guess I have to dance to gummy bear songs to get something made for me. Oh well, I guess I don't need anything. All right, let's see here. Oh man, this is such a good shave and not one nick to be seen, I swear. This Rockwell, it's like, it's almost nick proof. And it doesn't really give me razor burn either, even with a brand new feather blade, which, you know, gets a lot of talk online, you know, how sharp they are and people get, you know, nervous about using them, but it's only, pretty much the only one I use. And I never have a problem with it. But then my skin may be kind of slightly tougher than others. I got calloused face. I got a calloused face. All right. I think ah, there's like, it's always this nagging area right here. I just got to get, got to take it from like seven different angles. I don't have to, but you know, if you're going to do anything right, do it. I have to do it right. right. <laughs> All right, cold water, please. Cold water. <sighs> oh, man. Yeah, that feels good. Mm. So what's everybody's summer vacation plans? Are you not going anywhere? I think that we're going to Chicago for a short time and then up to Niagara Falls of all places to check that out and then up to the Thousand Islands region up there just below Canada above uh, what is it above uh, Alexandria it was Alex Bay they call it New York is that Alexandria Bay Alex Bay anyway we'll be up there in those islands um, and then the kids and the wife will go down to Pennsylvania to visit their her parents we will be with their parents the whole time but uh, that's what I'm doing. What are you guys doing besides putting Osage rub on your face every day to try to beat the heat? Let's do it. Didn't feel the need for the Osage hammer today. And not one lick of burn. And I, that Rockwell razor, man, it's the perfect razor for me. For me. Your mileage may vary, as they say on the internet, shortened to YMMV. 
in case you didn't know, I have to try to keep up with those things when I, you know, I see like I M H O or this, you know, I don't get the anagrams. I'm too old for that. <laughs> I type it out, dang it. I learned how to type. That feels good. <sighs> I'm gonna go lay under the fan out here after I'm done with this and just try to stop sweating. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's it, folks. That's all she wrote for today. I hope you have a good week. I hope you had a good weekend. I hope you stay cool or warm wherever you are. And the Southern Hemisphere is starting to cool now down there in Australia. And uh, the South Pole, I hear, is cold this time of year. Anyway, thanks for joining me. I'll see you again on Friday with uh, who knows what. It's going to be a surprise to you and me both. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you soon.